There are about two dozen launch sites along Florida's coast that have been abandoned for years. And the future of this area looked bleak when NASA's space shuttle program ended in 2011. But times have changed when SpaceX comes there. Most recently, Elon Musk's company has even shocked the entire rocket industry with insane working speed in Florida, from its rapid pace of building, expanding, launching, and so on. How exactly they do this? Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. When talking about SpaceX, we cannot help but talk about Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built in the world. Luckily for Florida, although SpaceX is developing Starship at Starbase, the company still foresees Florida as a home for Starship operations. In fact, SpaceX plans to transform parts of NASA's Kennedy Space Center to become an operational base for the company's super-powerful Starship launcher, while keeping a sprawling complex in South Texas as a research and development location for the heavy lift rocket program. At Pad 39A, once home to NASA's Saturn V moon rocket and space shuttle launches, SpaceX launches astronaut crews to the International Space Station and Falcon Heavy rockets, made by combining three Falcon rocket cores together to generate some 5.1 million pounds of thrust, more than any other operational launcher in the world. The Starship dwarfs all of those rockets, with the ability to haul up to 100 tons of cargo into a usable orbit a few hundred miles above Earth, Musk said. SpaceX is building a Starship pad just southeast of the Falcon rocket's launch mount within the fenced-in perimeter of Pad 39AA, which officials hope to complete later this year. The company is also interested in developing another Starship launch pad, known as Launch Complex 49, a few miles to the north. And in late 2021, SpaceX finally began constructing the second iteration of Starship's first Florida pad. Orbital Launch Site 2 is still co-located at Kennedy Space Center's LC-39 a pad, which SpaceX leases from NASA. They're moving very fast, Dale Ketchum, Vice President of Government Relations at Space Florida, the state's commercial space development agency ever shared. This is actually getting closer to what Elon got into this business for to begin with. This is fundamental infrastructure to get to Mars, the early stages of it. However, because of NASA's trepidation at the thought of a Starship failure indefinitely delaying SpaceX from completing its Crew Dragon or Falcon Heavy contracts for the agency, the company deprioritized Starship's Florida pad, slowing progress. SpaceX has, nonetheless, made significant progress. In 13 months, SpaceX has created foundations, modified one of Pad 39A's giant spherical tanks to store cryogenic methane, installed miles of plumbing, built and assembled a second skyscraper-sized Starship launch tower, installed the legs of the Pad's orbital launch mount, or OLMM, installed a water deluge system at the base of the OLM, assembled most of the OLMA's donut-like mount offsite constructed a new supersized storage tank and delivered a forest of smaller storage tanks. SpaceX has also completed the fabrication of a massive pair of steel arms, transported them to Pad 39AA, attached them to a wheeled vehicle, and installed the structure on the Starship launch tower in Florida. SpaceX employees have affectionately dubbed these arms chopsticks, and they are an essential part of what CEO Elon Musk refers to as Mechazilla, Mechazilla refers to the combined launch tower and arms that SpaceX has designed to catch, lift, stack, and fuel both stages of the Starship. Once completed, the tower's arms in Florida will be capable of precisely catching, handling, stacking, and unstacking Starship and super-heavy spacecraft, even in relatively windy conditions. To be honest, building the Starship launch tower is an engineering feat of great magnitude, far from being easy. Many engineers even consider this ground structure to be more challenging than the production of the Starship spacecraft itself. However, SpaceX has not only one launch tower in Texas, but has also constructed an additional launch tower in Florida during the initial rocket testing phase. But before Starship was launched here, SpaceX has been dominated this place with the speed of the Falcon rockets. 
Earlier this week, SpaceX launched for the 75 to time this year, continuing a flight cadence that should see the company come close to 100 missions by the end of December. More surprisingly, SpaceX plans to kick its launch rate into a higher gear in 2024. This will be largely driven by launches of upgraded Starlink satellites with the ability to connect directly with consumer cell phones, a service SpaceX calls Starlink Direct to Cell, a company official told ours this week. The goal next year is 12 launches per month for a total of 144 Falcon rocket flights. To compare last year, SpaceX launched 61 missions. In 2021, the number was 31. In the last 12 months, SpaceX has launched 88 Falcon rockets, plus one test flight of the company's much larger Starship rocket. It's almost needless to say that the primary factor driving SpaceX's increasing launch cadence is the company's ability to reuse rocket boosters and first-stage components. Last month, SpaceX launched its Falcon 9 booster for the 17th time as engineers extended the first stage's lifespan from 15 flights to 20 missions. According to SpaceX, this extended utility is currently reserved for Starlink launches. Furthermore, SpaceX's launch teams have been optimizing their launch sites for faster turnaround times. The turnaround time at SpaceX's busiest launch site in Florida has been reduced to less than four days between missions this year. This is crucial because SpaceX's other launch facility in Florida has been constrained by Falcon Heavy missions and crewed launches, which typically require more preparation time for each flight. From the outside, it can seem like SpaceX is rushing to each launch. But SpaceX says there's automation at every step, from launch processing to countdown operations to post-flight data reviews, where engineers look for near misses that may be harbingers of reliability concerns. Also, Getting most of the rocket back after each flight allows for detailed inspections to catch little problems before they become big ones. I see the fight rate can only occur if I can increase reliability so that they're not competing entities, the SpaceX official said. So we end up with actually a safer system, more reliable system to enable that flight rate. It's a really cool thing to be challenged to do that, and we're building all kinds of electronic processes and tools, techniques and ways to communicate within the company to actually make that a reality, to fly those 12 flights each month. Falcon 9 launch site in California has an older design, taking more time to set up for each mission primarily due to its robust back structure, resembling a vertical gantry structure alongside the rocket during the final countdown. Unlike their Florida counterparts, the robust backs in California do not retract from the rocket during liftoff. This means that the sturdy back structure has to endure a fiery plume of exhaust as the Falcon 9 ascends, leading to more refurbishment requirements between launches. Despite this challenge, SpaceX's ground team in California has still managed to execute Falcon 9 missions with turnaround times as short as 10 days. Officials from the U, Space Force's space launch Delta East, the agency overseeing launch operations from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and Kennedy Space Center, have efficiently coordinated their activities to meet the increasing demand for launches, mainly driven by SpaceX. In short, Elon Musk's SpaceX is spreading its wings in Florida so it can launch more space missions for its reusable Starship rocket. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time 